Hi everybody, uh, welcome to another Bringing the Zoo to You. Uh, my name is Emily, I'm one of the bird keepers. Thanks for joining us here. We are at the Living Coast today and we are going to be talking about how and why we put bands on birds. Um, so the first reason is for identification. Uh, we can't, as much as we would like to, we can't tell all of our birds apart just by looking at them. Um, most don't come when called. So we do have to mark them in a way that we can tell them apart from each other. Um, when we're talking about banding birds, it is based on the type of bird. So if we're looking at our penguins here, their legs are real short and uh, stocky. So it's a little easier for us to band them on their wing. Um, with their bands on their wings, it usually is just a rubbery type of stretchy band or a colored, uh, cable tie. Um, generally in the zoo world, if a bird has a band on its left side, it is a female bird. And if the bird has a band on its right side, it's a male bird. And that's usually universal with most institutions. Um, so when we're looking at the penguins, um, the band on the left, female, band on right, male. And we do try to match up our mated pairs here so that they match. Other birds, uh, flighted birds, we don't band them on their wing. Obviously, we band them on their legs. We have Inca terns and gray gulls here in this exhibit. And if you take a look closely, they all have a band on each leg. We give them what we call a permanent band, which is a metal band that has numbers or letters engraved on it. And that band pretty much stays with that bird um, for its life as long as it doesn't get damaged or lost. And then we give them a corresponding band on the other leg, usually a color. Um, it really depends on the size of the flock. Uh, we have a lot of turns here, so we're having to get creative so that we're not banding anybody the same colors because we do need to be able to tell them apart from a distance. Uh, daily, we do inventory where we come out on the exhibit and make sure that we see every bird every day. Um, some exhibits at the zoo, it's easier than others. Some birds are more visible than others. The terns are pretty visible. They are a large sized bird and um, they do have their general hangouts where they like to perch. So sometimes um, we can tell who it is just by where they're at. But we always confirm by looking at the bands with our binoculars. And then we do mark that and track that every single day to make sure that they are present, healthy and accounted for. Um, I do have some examples of the bands we use here. Um, for the penguins, we do use just the colored cable ties. We can use a smaller type for uh, the smaller birds like the uh, terns and gulls. Um, and then these are an example of our metal bands. So these are metal and they have a number engraved on it. We just open it up with a special tool, put it on the bird's leg and close it. None of these bands in any way injure the bird or prevent it from flying or doing everything that they need to do naturally. Um, we do monitor the condition of the bands Every time we catch a bird up, we always look and check and make sure the bands are in good condition. Um, if they are, if they look worn or uh, in any way uh, unreadable, we will replace them so that they are able to be identified. Um, I do have a little, an example, I have a, uh, sorry, an Inca turn here that we did catch uh, so that we can do a wellness check on it and we will do a band check so i'm just going to do that for you now and then we'll let him go i think the door's on the other side okay okay so here is our inca turn he's obviously not super happy oh don't bite the microphone <laughs> no thank you he's not super happy about being caught up but we are just holding him gently. He's not holding me gently. But we do take a look at their feet and their nails, trim them if need be, weigh them, and then we double check to make sure that these are the correct bands and check it against the list that we have. So he's black on the left, black metal, and then yellow cable tie on the right. There's no other bands, uh, birds banded like him out here so we can tell who it is. I'm gonna go ahead and let him go. <laughs> and there he goes, happy to be free. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would be happy to answer any questions. Please put them in the comments. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for joining us today. 
Are all of the birds at the zoo banded? Um, almost all of the birds are banded. Um, there are a few, there were a few exam, um, exceptions. Um, sometimes we don't band certain parrots because they can chew their bands off very easily. They're very good at that. Um, birds that we only have, so like one or two of like the macaws, they did not have bands, but they are obviously easy to tell apart and they are uh, more close up. But in general, generally speaking, um, all of our birds are banded. Um, you can see the pelicans have bands, the peafowl that are roaming around all have bands. Um, so we just need to know, you know, who they are and where they are and to monitor, you know, their behavior. Uh, can you remind us what birds are in in here in the Rocky Shore area oh, at the Living so Coast? Apart from the humble penguins, we have Inca terns, which are the smaller birds that have the red beaks and feet. And then we also have a species of gull called gray gulls. We only have about nine of those. There is one right up top there on the left. There are a species of gull that is also from South America, the, the eastern coast, or sorry, western coast of South America where the penguins and the uh, Inca terns are from. Do you know the temperature of, of this room is kept at? Yep, it's kept roughly between 68 and 70 degrees. It's a little warmer in here today because of the uh, heat outside. Um, <laughs> But all the birds in here ha can just, they can uh, survive a wide range of temperatures. These penguins are warm weather birds, so they, they don't need it to be cold. And they can survive in ambient temperatures that we're comfortable in, also much warmer. Mm -hmm. Do you ever change the band colors for any reason? Very good question. Yes, we do. So um, when a bird is young, we will give it what we call temporary bands because we don't know the sex of the bird usually right off the bat. We have to wait for their plumage to come in or for a DNA test to come in. In the case of the terns and the penguins and the gulls, they are not um, sexually dimorphic, meaning they don't look different. The males and females don't look different from each other. So in that case, we do have to take a small blood test in order to find out if it's a male or female. So once we find out it's a male or female, we will change the bands accordingly and band them on the right leg or with the metal band for male birds, left leg with the metal band for female birds, and then the wings for penguins. Do the terns ever interact with the penguins? They do. Um, we have a lot, especially our youngster terns, like to follow the penguins when they're swimming and sometimes they like to dive bomb them and play a little bit. <laughs> um, do you ever get pooped on in here? Every day. <laughs> it's good luck. It is good luck, yes. Um, and which, this right in front of us, is this a gray gull or is this so a tern? That is a tern, that is a juvenile Inca tern. So it is not in its, um, it is not in its adult coloration. It usually takes a year or so for the turns to fully change. Their beaks will oh. turn red and their feet will turn red. They'll get those little cool mustaches. You can see this guy starting to get his, um, but he still has the brown coloration of a juvenile. We okay. did do a DNA test on him when he was a little younger, found out he was a male. So that is why if you're close up, he's got a metal band on his right leg and a color band on his left leg. <laughs> Uh, who's the oldest bird here? The oldest bird at the zoo? Uh, in, in here at the Living Coast. In here at the Living Coast. Um, our oldest bird is a penguin named Solo. She is 31, I believe. Turning 32, I think, this year. Huh, that sounds about right. Is, is the Living Coast open? It is open. Uh, we are happy to welcome everyone back. The penguins and the other birds are happy to see everyone again. I know that they like to watch you as much as you like to watch them so we are we are open i did notice when i came in and said hi to the penguins they were no longer impressed <laughs> <laughs> i felt a little sad because yes. normally when it was closed i would come in and they'd be like oh pay attention and they were just like oh hi yes oh, yeah hi. they're they're used so. <laughs> to everyone coming back again but they're happy about it so oh that was that was our next question do they enjoy do the penguins enjoy seeing people I, I like to think they do um, because oh, while we were closed, they, there definitely was a certain, uh, certain, <laughs> certain excitement anytime anyone came yes. through that you know didn't yes. seem to be as much when we were open every day. So, <laughs> alrighty. Well, I want to thank you all again for joining us for another bringing the zoo to you. Um, as we just said, the Living Coast is open along with a few of the other buildings in the zoo. So please come back and visit us again and we look forward to seeing you. Thank you.